All right, in this video, I'll be showing you how to run a SageMaker notebook using AWS Lambda. So let's say you have a notebook over here and you want to automate the running of this notebook without having to come into the console and run the cells manually. Essentially, there are two steps involved. First, we will need to set up a Lambda function, which will run the Jupyter notebook via a WebSocket. And then in order to call this Lambda function, we will need to set up an API endpoint, which we can then call through our application. So first of all, to set up the Lambda function, the way I'm going to do this is to first write the function locally, install the WebSocket client, and then upload the code to AWS Lambda. So in my terminal, I'll make a new folder, call it Lambda, and cd into that. And now I'll create a file for the Lambda function, and you can use whatever text editor you like. Here I'm just going to use Vim just because it's convenient. So let me just call it Vim Lambda function dot py and we use python and i've already prepared the code beforehand so i'm just going to paste it in here and let's not worry about this now i'll explain more later when we get to the aws lambda portion so first i'll just save this file and now that we have this file over here the next thing we need to do is to install the websocket client so i can do pip3 install and i want to install this in a folder that's called websocket client and the package we're going to install is the websocket client so give it a moment and now that we have the lambda function and the websocket client we can actually zip this all up so that we can eventually upload this to our aws lambda so to do that we do zip and recursively we want to zip into function.zip whatever that's in this current directory so there'll be the dot and now if i do a ls you'll see that we have the function.zip over here and this is what we want to upload to AWS Lambda. Now in your AWS console, you can open up AWS Lambda and create a new function. And let's just give it a name that's automate notebook. And let's go with Python 3.6. We can keep this as the default and create. Now we have our Lambda function. You can see that we have Lambda function.py, which is the default template but we can actually upload from our zip file that we just created so upload function.zip open it and save now you can see the code that we actually had previously so essentially what's going on is that we need Bodo tree and with the Bodo tree we are going to create a SageMaker client and we will have a notebook instance name of automate notebook currently this has not been created but we're going to do that in just a moment but let's say you have a notebook called automate notebook and then you're going to basically set up the HTTP connection and then make a WebSocket connection to that. And then here is actually where the magic is happening. You're going to send a command to the standard input. This command, which is Jupyter NB convert, and it will execute the notebook in place. Which notebook is it going to execute? It's going to execute this notebook that's found in this path, slash home, slash EC2 user, SageMaker, and this notebook called Hello World. And so you can replace this with whatever your notebook name is called. And then once that is done, we'll close the connection and then we're done. So that's at a high level what's going to happen. And before we forget, we should also configure our permissions. So in the configuration, we will need to set our permissions for this Lambda function to access SageMaker. So to do that, we'll open up the role and add an additional permission to it to allow it to access SageMaker. So you can see that currently we only have the basic execution role and nothing else. So to add the SageMaker permission, attach policies and search for SageMaker. Let's go with full access and you might want to be more specific about this if you are doing this in a production environment. And now this should allow Lambda to access SageMaker. And now we can actually go and create that notebook. So open up SageMaker, go under notebooks and notebook instances, create a new instance and let's call this automate notebook. And that's because that's what I have it named in my Lambda function in my code in my code over here so you can name it whatever you like but i'm just going to name it automate notebook and go with t2 medium and the rest should be fine click on create notebook instance and give it a moment to load because it will be allocating the resources and while we are waiting you can actually go and create the api endpoint so under your lambda function you can actually add a trigger so let's add an api gateway trigger and we'll create a rest api and we set the security to open. Again, if you were to push this app to production, you would probably want to change the permissions here. But for example, we'll just make it open and 
add this trigger and now we can actually go to this trigger let's go ahead and delete this any over here because we simply need to have a post request so I'm going to create a post request so that we can make a call to this API so let's select post request and let's go with lambda function use lambda proxy integration this is just to allow you to access any request details in the event variable of your handler function and the lambda function itself because you need to specify which lambda function this api will link to so you can go under your lambda function again under your general configuration under your overview actually you can copy this function arn go back to api gateway paste it here and there it automatically suggests to you automate-nb select that save click ok and now we've set up the post request now one other thing you'll need to enable is cores so under here you can click enable cores so that you can call this api from different origins so let's go with all of these options and enable cores if they ask you are you sure you want to continue just click yes replace existing values and there we have it now let's check up on our notebook it should be set up so over here we can open up the Jupyter notebook and we're going to create a notebook that will simply have a print statement so i'm going to go over here open up a python 3 notebook give it a moment to load and here we just want to say print so currently if i run this everything works fine but to verify later that this actually wants we're going to delete this and clear the output so now it's going to be a notebook with no output currently let's call this our let's see what we have it named here so we can call this whatever you want but i'm just going to call it our hello world notebook so i'm just going to go here and name it hello underscore world save that and so if i actually go into lambda and test this function here you'll see that we get unable to import lambda function so and this is probably why you shouldn't copy paste code so it should be from websocket dash client import websocket because under here i have the websocket here so let's deploy this and try this out again so i think it might be because of this naming let's try websocket underscore client and try it this way websocket underscore client so many typos let's try it this time hopefully this works if we cross our fingers at least we get a different message this time time out after three seconds so let's see maybe without this sleeping if i test it this time let's see yeah we get a response now because we are returning none so i think this is great if you open up the notebook here if i refresh you see that actually it has been run let's restart this let's restart and clear output so you don't actually need to test this with postman you can actually just test it in your lambda over here but if let's say you want to test the api endpoint because you want to use it in an application we can actually check what is that endpoint by going under triggers details and we can copy this endpoint and we will make a post request to this endpoint in postman so let's open up postman so here in postman we will paste that url and make a post request but before we do that let me just show you one way you can verify that the notebook is actually running and that's by going into your notebook and creating a new terminal instance so you can currently see that what we have running we have no terminals running so i can actually create a terminal to check whether the websocket request is being made correctly so i open up a terminal if i go into postman and make the post request let's see we get an internal server error but if i go and check you can see that in the terminal here we've actually returned 841 bytes which means that we have successfully run the notebook so if we check the notebook and refresh you see that we have actually run the print statement you can probably configure the response in your code over here because currently we are just returning none but essentially that's how you're going to automatically run your Jupyter notebook using aws lambda and by setting up an api endpoint if you found this video useful, do like and share it. And do consider subscribing if you'd like to see more of such videos. Also, feel free to drop a comment if you have any questions or suggestions and I'll definitely get back to you. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.